Hello, I am Summer Dunn. I am the library specialist and the garden champion at Lincoln Elementary School. And I want to thank you for tuning in to my PUSD at home garden club. So just because we can't be together in our school gardens, I do not want the students to miss this prime time for planting things in Prescott. So hopefully these videos will inspire you and your families to get outside and start planting some food and enjoying the fun and productive hobby of food growing. So one of the gardening principles that we had been learning about in our after school Lincoln garden programs is phenology. And phenology is the concept that we use signs from nature to tell us when we should plant certain things as gardeners and when we should do other garden chores. For example, we look for blooming daffodils as a sign to tell us that it is time to plant semi-hardy vegetables and seeds and plants. And since the daffodils are blooming now, we take this as a phenological sign that tells us to plant things like lettuce, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, cilantro, arugula, carrots, radishes, beets, onions, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and many other cold hardy plants. And you can usually check the back of the package if you're not sure exactly when to plant, but not always. That's why phenology comes in handy. All right, so of course it's still way too cold, especially at nights in Prescott, to be planting some of our more tender annuals like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and squashes and beans and whatnot. So we're gonna be looking for another phenological sign to tell us when it's time to plant those out and that will be bearded irises. So for now, all of these tender annuals are sitting on my growing tables in my house where it's nice and warm and they have some nice artificial grow lights to keep them growing strong, but they're not going outside until the bearded irises are blooming. So this week with the daffodils blooming, we are going to plant our semi-hardy annual vegetables. Susie Delgado and Charlie Dunn and myself are now going to show you how we planted radishes, borage, and lettuce, all semi-hardy annuals, into the Lincoln School Garden. Um, but please note though that the campuses of PUSD are all closed to the public. We were given special permission from the principal to go into the gardens and, ma and maintain the garden and film videos. Um, we've been practicing social distancing and safety with our health. So these videos are just to help you to start growing stuff in your own yards. So today here, we're gonna plant some carrots and some beets and some radishes. So this is our roots bed and we need to get the soil ready first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down some compost all along here and some fertilizer, both organic. We don't wanna be putting chemicals on our food. So I'm gonna spread a nice thick layer of fresh compost all over where I'm going to plant my roots. I'm gonna bring the whole bag, the more the better. The roots are medium feeders. They like a lot of nutrients to be healthy and strong. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some organic fertilizer on there too. Just follow the directions on your bag. There's lots of different kinds of fertilizers you can buy at Home Depot or the garden center. Best to do it on a, a day that's not windy so it's not blowing all over. All right, and then next I'm gonna take something like a garden fork or a hand tiller or even just a shovel and start mixing it in with the soil that's already there. So this is my hand tiller. I just start mixing in the compost and the fertilizer, making the soil all nice and soft because our vegetables need healthy soil to be healthy vegetables. We are going to make furrows. Our soil is nice and soft. Garden Club teacher and I'm here with Mrs. Dunn 
and we are going to be planting some radish seeds now. Miss Dunn went ahead and prepped our soil and is just ready for us to drop um, in our little crevices that we made today. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to take the seeds and we're going to space them about an inch apart. Spacing your seeds is going to be really important because it's going to make sure that your seeds have enough room to grow. So we're going to go ahead and just put our little seeds in there. And then and that's it. And then once you guys are ready, we're going to go ahead and cover them up. And then we'll water them and we keep taking care of them. And with about 28 days and a month, we'll have our radishes. Bye, guys. All right, guys. So Charlie is going to be planting borage for us. So we're here in our perennial patch. These are things that come back year after year. And we've got some flowers in here too. She's gonna plant some borage. Borage is a flower that the bees really like. So Charlie's just gonna sprinkle some of the seeds in her hand because we don't wanna use the whole packet. She's gonna sprinkle some of those seeds in her, her little hand. And we've got our, our soil patch nice and ready. See that little patch of nice dark soil, it's loose. It's worked up. We get all the weeds out of it. So now Charlie's just going to sprinkle those seeds into the trench about an inch apart. <laughs> Borage is really cool because the bees love it. It's a pretty blue flower. It attracts bees, which are good pollinators for our garden. But another cool thing about borage is that we can eat the flowers too. They're really pretty blue flowers that are actually quite yummy. They almost taste like cucumbers. They're fun to put on salads or decorate your cupcakes and whatnot with. All right, so now that the seeds are in, she's just gonna push some of the soil over the, over the seeds so that they're about a quarter of an inch deep in the soil. You don't wanna cover them too much, otherwise the energy that the seed has stored inside of it won't be enough for it to push it's sprout out of the soil. And then we're gonna keep it nice and watered and keep our eyes on it and watch for our borage plants. Oh, we're gonna also put a little marker at the end of the line there, the end of the row to tell us and everybody else what we planted there. And that's it. Thanks, Charlie. All right, guys, here we are in another patch of the garden. And again, we've got daffodils blooming. That means it is time to plant things like lettuce. So here I have a seed packet of lettuce. It's a lettuce mix. We've got all different kinds of lettuce in it. I wanted to show you all the inf interesting information we get on the back of a seed packet, okay? So here we have a description of the lettuce. And then here it has the light requirements, how to plant it, spacing. That means how far apart you should plant the seeds, how deep you should plant the the lettuce. It's pretty important with lettuce to notice that you barely cover it. So I'll show you how to do that. How long it takes to germinate. So that means it'll be seven to ten days before the seeds actually come out of the ground as sprouts. And then it tells us how high it's going to get. Okay guys, so we're going to plant our lettuce. This is the spot that I've arranged for it. I made little tiny furrows with my hand rake. Nothing major. Just little. Here, I'll show you how I do that. I take little hand rake and I just make tiny little scratches in the soil and then it's just as simple as putting the seeds in your hand taking a pinch and kind of evenly sprinkling them all over just like you're powdering a cake or trying to salt your vegetables you just want to sprinkle it all around and then lettuce barely wants to be covered so I'm just going to take a handful of, of the soil next to it and I'm just going to gently sprinkle the soil over the seeds simple as that. Give it a little pat, let everything settle in, and then we're going to water it. And the last step in planting our seeds, Charlie is giving them a good watering. And watering is something that needs to be done basically every day until the seeds actually germinate. If we don't keep the soil moist, the seeds won't germinate. So it's important to keep them watered. You don't want to drown the seeds. You don't want them floating in a puddle of water, but you want to keep the soil moist. I mean, it's just a little bit of water every day until they germinate. And then after that, different plants take different amounts of water, but you still need to keep them watered.
All right, guys, we hope this was helpful. If you're watching this on Facebook, please feel free to comment with your questions or ideas about garden clubs in Prescott. And thanks again for being part of my PUSD at Home Garden Club. Until next time, happy growing!